All right, hi there, guys. My name is Trevor Page, and I am the uh, founder and instructor inside of the Java Video Tutorials.net website. And I just decided to uh, post a video here about uh, a popular topic that I hear a lot about, and it's the equals equals versus the equals method, and what it means and, and how it uh, relates to the objects that you create. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit of a tutorial for you, um, starting with. I guess uh, a test with the double equal sign, or rather the equals equals operator. It's another um, another term that we use to describe this uh, equals equals thing. So uh, I'm going to use three different objects for you um, in this tutorial. So object, integer, and string. And I'm going to uh, create, I guess, the first object, the first integer, and the first string. Okay, and I'll assign some values to it. I'll, you know, create or instantiate a new object. I'll, um, <clears throat> let's say, use the, you know, integer 3000, because why not? And uh, I'll instantiate a new string object and maybe put the, the string 3000 inside of that. Now, I'm also going to uh, create another set of objects because I want to be comparing this, these objects, uh, oops, comparing these objects to these objects, okay? So these ones I'll call the second um, object, second integer, and uh, second string. Okay, so fair enough. You can see that um, each of these are, they seem similar. You got the first object was just new object, second object is also new ob new object, and um, <clears throat> the first and second integer both sort of point to the same values. So let's take a look and see uh, what it is that that happens when we are dealing with. Uh, these objects, and actually, I'm, I'm realizing maybe I'll say new integer 3000 because I want to show you exactly uh, what happens behind the scenes here. So um, I'm going to then do some system outs and just sort of output, um, you know, is the first object equal to the second object? Okay, and I'll put a little question mark, and I'm going to concatenate the result here, and the result is going to just be first object and equals equals second object. So this is just a string that will output to the console and it has no bearing on the real code by any means. But this is where the magic will happen where we'll actually see if the first object um, is equal to the second object using the equals equals operator. Okay, And I'm just going to uh, sort of copy paste um, my results here and here and here for the string and the second integer and the second string. Oops, second string. Let me just double check that, make sure everything looks okay, because we all make copy paste errors from time to time. Okay, <clears throat> so let's run this and see what our result is. And in our console here, you see that they are all false. The first and second object are not equal to each other, same with the integers and same with the strings. So now let's do this in the same fashion only now I'm going to use the dot equals method to compare these two guys together, okay? So now I'm going to say is um, first object equal to the second object. And the same with the integers if it's equal. And the strings to see if they are equal. And obviously since I'm doing it here, I need to do it over here because this is, like I said, where the magic actually happens. Um, this is where the uh, Java will actually execute this code and um, and decide whether or not these objects are indeed equal to each other or not. Okay, so let's run this code and uh, and see what the results are here. So as you can see, f uh, false, tr true, and true. Okay, so we've gone from when I run all of these uh, tests, we've gone from having uh, the integer and string change from false to be true. So why is that? What's the difference? Okay, well, what happens is with the equal equal operator, um, so these guys up here, what Java is doing is actually looking at and comparing the physical memory location of the objects. Okay, so what happens is since we're using the new keyword here, we're actually creating new objects inside of memory. Okay, so you can think of it this way: the the memory uh, location of of these three objects. Let's say, just for the sake of argument, that first object points to memory location. Let's say one. Okay, 
the first integer would also point to the memory location, or I shouldn't say one, I should say two, and the first uh, string maybe points to memory location three. Fair enough. But now what we've done is we've instantiated three new objects down here, okay? But since we've instantiated new objects via the new keyword, these are going to be brand new memory locations. So when I say equal equal here, I'm just comparing the memory location. So really what Java is saying is, is 1 equal to 4? So obviously 1 is not equal to 4, so it returns false. And then it says is 2 equal to 5? False. Is 3 equal to 6? False. Okay, so that's what is going on behind the scenes, and that's why we get falses. So then what's the difference between the equals equals operator and the equals method? Well, let's find out. So the equals method does something a little bit different, okay? And we can actually look and see what it is that happens when we uh, inspect the equals method for these objects. So for the first object, dot equals second object, I can actually right click on the equals here and say open declaration, okay? Or F3, depending on if you're using uh, Spring, STS, or um, Eclipse. So you can see that this is the equals code that actually gets run. It actually gets executed. So what happens is with objects, because remember we're looking at the object class, we're looking at the object class which comes from the fact that we're comparing objects, okay? First object versus second object. So it uses the equals method of the object class. And all that does is it returns um, whether or not this instance of this object is equal to the instance of the other object that we're passing in, which really is the same thing as saying is the memory location equal, okay? So it's really with the object, as far as the object is concerned, it's looking at memory locations, okay? And that is evident by looking at the object classes equals method. Um, that's essentially what it's doing, okay? But if we compare that to the first integer versus second integer, you can see that it's returned true instead of false. So what's, what's the magic going on there? Well, we can do the same thing. We can right click and say open declaration, and we can actually look at the integer class. And you can see that the integers equals method is a little bit different than the objects equals method, okay? What's, what's actually happening? Well, first it checks to see if the object being passed in is indeed an integer object. If it is not an integer object, it will automatically say false. But if it is an integer object, then it does something a little bit further. What it does is it takes the actual int value of the object that we're passing in, and it will return based on whether or not that's equal to the actual integer value, the int value of the integer that you're dealing with. Okay. So what that does is it compares first integer, so it compares this number the value, the int value of that number, and compares it to the int value of the second number. So now we're literally saying, we're not saying is 2 equal to 5 anymore, we're actually saying is 3000 equal to 3000. And the answer to that is true. Okay? So that's what's happening here. That's a little bit of magic is going on behind the scenes that you don't really realize unless you start to sort of drill down into Java's code. So then the same thing can be said for the string here. Let's take a look at the equals method for the strings, okay? And you see, uh, first of all, it checks to see if this um, being passed in is indeed an object or not. Fair enough. Um, because if, if the two match, this is saying if the memory location of this object is equal to the memory location of the object we're comparing with, then obviously they must be the same thing. Strings are a little bit different than objects because strings maintain something called sort of like a, a string pool, uh, which I, I don't want to get into because it's outside of the scope of this. But needless to say, if they are the same object, then it just returns true right away. Um, otherwise, if just like with the integers, it checks to see if this object is indeed an instance of a string. If it is a string that we're passing in, then we'll go further. Otherwise, we say, no, they're not equal to each other. And what happens is inside of the string, it will actually just physically determine if one string is actually equal to another string based on the actual letters in there. And remember, it's case sensitive and, uh, and all that good stuff that goes along with the Java string equivalents, okay? So it will actually compare the string 3000, which is just a bunch of numbers, compared to another string 3000, okay? So I'm going to throw one more curveball in here. I have created a user object, okay? And this user object is a custom object that has both a username and a password in it. 
So now I want to instantiate a user object, okay? So, sorry, not string, user equals new user, okay? And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set the username and password. I'll set the username equal to Trevor Page, and I'll set the password equal to, I don't know, password because I don't feel like being very creative at this point in time. And, uh, and what I'm going to do is I should say, sorry, call this first user, and I'll call the other one second user to go along with our um, naming conventions that we've had, second user. And I'm going to do the same thing here where I compare the two users, first user compared to second user, using the equals equals operator. Okay, And I'm also going to do the same thing down here with the dot equals method. And while I'm sort of copy pasting this code out and writing this out, I want you to think in, in, your, in your own head, what is it that you expect to have happen um, with the difference between the equals equals and the dot equals method with respect to the actual user, okay? So what do you think is going to happen? Well, let's actually find out. Because remember, this is, a, this is a, an object that we've created and we've set it to be the exact same username and password. This username and password are the same for the first and second user. So let's run both of these tests and see what has happened. So we see that the first user with the equals equals operator to the second user is false, as well as the dot equals method. Now I completely fouled up in my, um, my copy pasting there, I apologize. Let me switch this over to dot equals second user and run that again. There we go. So, I mean, the, the results won't change, but I just wanted to show you that this is the dot equals method that we're actually using, okay? So, you see that they're false in both cases. Well, what's going on there? They are the same user, because we have the same username and the same password. Well, if I right-click on the equals method for the, these users, let's see what I get. Interesting. It goes right to the object class. So, this goes along with overriding the equals method. If I don't override the equals method for a custom object type, by default, it will use the object class's equal method, which I just talked about, just compares memory locations, okay? So really what's happening here is the same thing that was happening before, okay? So, <clears throat> first user, let's say is pointing to memory location four. And I guess these aren't first user, they should all really probably say second. Again, it's all my copy-pasting technique here that is flawed. <laughs> this should all say second. Um, this second user is going to be pointing to number seven. So four versus seven, that's the comparison that it's doing in both cases, both the equals equals operator and the dot equals operator, because we have not overridden the equals method. So again, of course, four is not equal to seven, so it says false. Well, how do we change that? Well, that's where overriding the equals method comes into play. I can go into the user class and actually override the equals method. I can type in equals and I can hit control space and I can see here it says override method in object and I can double click on that. So this actually overrides the equal method and then I can provide my own implementation for what I think should mean that two users are equal to each other or not. So I can actually say return this user's username and um, and compare that to um, the, or I can say probably equals the object pa being passed in's username. So I can say uh, this should actually probably be casted to an actual user class type. And like so. Then I can say dot get username. Okay, now if all goes as expected, what will happen is username is a string, and get username we're being we're casting the the object being passed into the user class and getting the username which is also a string. So if I inspect what is happening inside of this equals method, if I right click and say open declaration, you see that it goes to the string class. Okay, because then we're comparing two strings, we're comparing the username strings. So with this now being overridden with our new implementation. If I go to the equals test, and now I right-click on the equals method, and I open declaration, 
it now no longer goes to the object class. It realizes that I'm overriding the user classes equals method and is now pointing to this code which I have implemented myself. So now what happens? Let's run these tests and see. So now you see that the first user dot equals second user is now equal to true. So it is actually um, implementing our code that we've written and comparing the usernames together. So if one username is equal to another username, then this is considered to be equal, therefore we return true. And the same thing is happening for, with the equals equals operator, it's still comparing memory locations, that does not change, so it is returning false. So there you go. That's a, a fairly quick overview on what the equals equals operator is and what the equals method is and how they differ between each other with respect to both objects that we can use in Java and custom objects that we can create ourselves in Java. All right. So hopefully that was a great help, and I look forward to seeing you at javavideotutorials.net.